Welcome to another episode of IAAF Inside Athletics. I'm your host, Atul Bolden. We have a special guest on our show today. She hails from the USA. She was the 2014 3000 Indoor US Champion, but that's just a very small part of her story. Allow me to introduce Gabe Brunwald. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Adam. So Gabe, um, most of your interviews, I imagine, will start with your illness and how you are able to cope with being, I don't even say a survivor, you're a cancer fighter because you're an active fighter in this cancer thing. How do you cope with your competition versus your illness? Yeah, I think they have been intertwined a lot over the last five to seven years of my life. So running for me has always been an escape and an outlet from you know, going through my cancer treatments and trying to carry on with my life uh, normally as much as I can. Um, so anytime I get a chance to continue my training or go for a run, it's a, it's always a welcome escape from thinking about my, my health and all my issues. Everybody knows somebody who has been uh, affected by cancer. Do you find yourself um, sort of being an advocate in a way that you never thought you would be because of your profile as an American athlete. Um, it's, it would seem to me that your profile as a cancer advocate is raised by that fact. Yeah, definitely. I did not expect to find myself in this position whatsoever. Uh, to be, become a professional runner even as a two-time cancer survivor. I mean, yeah. I was a cancer survivor in college and all I wanted to do was be the best runner I could be and that's what helped me get through my right. initial diagnosis and that dream came true and I became a professional runner and the US champion and I have been able to travel the world as a runner and that's all I ever wanted. I never wanted to deal with cancer ever again. Right. No one ever does. But since it has been something I've had to deal with again, I've had to reassess how much I, you know, how much I want to share my story and obviously cancer is a part of my story. Yes. I wish that running were the, the main, only part the of the main story. byline, but, right. it, but it isn't and I can't, I can't necessarily change that. So I just want to make the most of the, you know, small platform that I have raising awareness for rare cancer specifically as something that I'm passionate about. And I've been trying to, you know, raise awareness and hopefully be an inspiration for people who are going through something challenging like cancer. It might be cancer, it might be something else, but my story is one of just carrying on and living the best life that I can every day. Now you are well along the path of having to deal with this awful disease. What do you find yourself telling people who are newly diagnosed? Because for many people still, a cancer diagnosis in their minds equals a sentence of death. You have lived with it long enough, enough to know that that's not necessarily the case. What do you tell people who are traumatized by the initial diagnosis? I think it's really important to take your time to, to figure out what's important to you going forward because for me, I, I didn't want to accept that life was never going to be the same and I was never going to think about my life the same and that was hard for me to accept for a while and I think I, if I could go back I would just try to really accept the fact that it's going to change and that maybe there are going to be some bad things because of this, but also there might be some surprising blessings mm -hmm. along the way. So, but the main thing that has helped me is to try to hold on to the things that I love to do and surround myself with positive people. And sometimes that's hard because cancer is challenging for families and caregivers to really know what to say or what to encourage. But for me, I, I have been lucky. I've been able to run through a lot of my treatments and, you know, I've had to take breaks here and there, but mainly surrounding myself with people who are supportive of me and cont continuing to, to run and train and race has been critical for me. Now you were fourth at the uh, 2012 trials. Yeah. Um, they always say that fourth is, is the worst place you want to get, which I never understood because it seemed to me fifth and sixth and everybody else is still kind of <laughs> upset that they didn't make the team. But I wonder if you look back at, uh, at, at just missing the team in, in 2012 and realize that, you know, that was probably part of sort of a renaissance because that was around the time when the United States, particularly on the women's side, really you can look back and say they started to step up. It kind of started before with Jenny Simpson and so on, but that middle distance, uh, those middle distance core certainly started to assert themselves more around that time. Definitely. 
take me back to 2012 and, and as you look back at your assessment of it. Yeah, I think 2012 was a great year for me. Fourth of the trials, like you yeah. said, I, I, that was the highest I had placed at an outdoor right. championship. So it's tough because you can look at especially middle distance races and look back and there's things that could have done differently right. maybe. Right, should have moved here, should have sat here, yeah. <laughs> it, for, exactly, and I think my next race right after the trials would, was the type of race that could have got me on the team potentially. Mm -hmm. But I try to see the positives that it was a big step in my career just being in contention for that but yeah with Jenny Simpson and Shannon Roberry and Brenda Martinez we've had you know a lot of great middle distance runners people not only doing well um, on the world level but bringing home medals and that is that did all change kind of during my my era and it's it's hard because you want to sort of rise through of that course. and I've had some interruptions along the way some unforeseen circumstances but it's been fun to be a part of that sort of excellence at, in the middle distances that is new to American female middle distance running. Yeah. So you're born and raised in Minnesota? Yes. Well, a little colder than I would like to uh, <laughs> experience, although I think I probably will be up there for the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. um, tell me a little bit, bit about your path towards collegiate running and then pro running. Was this something that you know, you look back and this was always something that was coming or like me where, you know, being pro, a pro athlete, a pro runner was never in your thoughts at an early age. Yeah, I, I mean, I loved running from the moment I started. I tried a lot of different sports growing up and I'm from a small town, so I was kind of, I feel like I was a medium sized fish in a very small pot. <laughs> I wouldn't even call myself a big fish though. Right. Um, I, I was not like breaking records. I was from a small school. I was qualifying for state meets, but I didn't even win one state title until oh, my wow. last race okay. and I did not get really any division one, much division one interest. And so I was considering going division two or three. I, I knew I wanted to run at the collegiate level, but I decided to walk on to the University of Minnesota, right. which was huge. Golden Gophers. Uh, yeah, the Golden <laughs> Gophers, definitely. And that was a big risk for me. But I, I figured if I was going to go for the college running, I wanted to see what I could do at the division one level. and. I never looked back. It, it, it was a great decision. I had a really, I had a breakthrough year my freshman year. Right. And then, you know, I had a little bit of improvements here and there, but I really didn't have professional running on my radar until my senior year was a huge year for me. That was after my first cancer diagnosis. I had right. like a dream season of trying to run so much better than I did before. And all I wanted to do was get back to the track. And I did much more than that. And yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> so you had an awesome freshman year, yeah. awesome senior year. Yeah. What about those years in between? How did you get through those? They were so they were solid. We had a, a really strong team of middle mm -hmm. distance runners back then. And I think I sometimes got lost in the shuffle of the oh. team and maybe um, going too hard in practice and expecting more of myself on race day. They weren't, they weren't years that I necessarily, I didn't run poorly, but I just, you know, stagnated here and there. and always was looking to get to that next level of becoming all American and, you know, competing at NCAA championships outside of just the team side. But, um, I, I eventually did get there. It just took a while. <laughs> was there a point at which in college you had a race or an experience or a series of things happened to you and you went, okay, now I can clearly see that the next thing I'm going to do is to be a pro runner. It happened very late for me though, that moment I actually, it, it all really does revolve around my cancer diagnosis, right. which is strange. Um, I was doing just fine before then, but I wasn't like a standout, definitely. Um, so I came back from my first surgery and a summer of radiation. I lost an outdoor season um, and I just wanted to get back. I had to petition the NCAA for a clock extension and a waiver so I could have that last season. I was in grad school, so it all ended up working out, but each I ended up taking 10 seconds off my 1500 personal best from the beginning of the year to the end over those like six months. And mm -hmm. I just saw myself in a different way and I sort of lost some of those excuses that I had and it just changed the way that I thought about myself and my goals and also gave me a sense of urgency in trying to complete them. Yeah. So it was crazy. I don't think I saw myself becoming a pro runner until NCAA championships my last season. So just at the very end. <laughs> just at the yeah. end, yeah. America is a, is a country where a lot of kids run in great numbers as youth. And then as they get older, somehow running 
we lose kids to other sports and the girls, a lot of them, stop running as young women. Um, as somebody who has sort of gone the entire path, what do you think um, the USA could do better to keep some of the kids who start running early running later into their careers? Yeah, I think that's a, it's a definite, definite challenge. For me in high school, I, I ran track and I did cross country, but I also played basketball all through high school in the winter. What position? Uh, point guard. Oh, nice. <laughs> I wasn't very good, but it was a great <laughs> distraction from running for me. Yeah. And it was, I think for me, not specializing and not just running all year really helped me to to improve year after year and also just keep the, the fire burning for the competition and the whole season. I think sometimes maybe we get a little bit too excited about early success and you know, start pounding that mileage all year round. And I think that's really tough to sustain all through. And I think that's one reason I was excited still about training in college. And, you know, I had that break in the winter. I pro it probably made me a little bit slower. Uh, I should have maybe run a little more in the winter, but, right. but I think it gave me longevity during those years that I may not have had otherwise. What do you find is your biggest distraction when you are not having a good day as a, as a cancer um, survivor, as a cancer patient? And maybe even, you know, your passion for running is, has not, you know, resulted in a good day of training. What do you find is the distraction that always gives you some comfort? I think for me, I have so much uncertainty in my life right now that if I can just focus on the moment and live in the moment, it's a huge challenge for me because I'm constantly thinking about what's coming next and what am I going to, am I going to get this indoor track season or am I going to have treatment? Um, but I really... It's, it's really been good for me to try to teach myself to live in the moment and not get so caught up in next week and next month. It's like, can I do this workout today? Can I enjoy this 60 minute run? Um, it, I mean, it's hard, but it, it really challenges me to, to stay in the moment. <laughs> I think your story is a fascinating one, and I certainly thank you for coming and spending some time with us. Yeah. And uh, all the best in your fight and in thank your career. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for having me.